What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Java tutorial where we are going to be learning about file input and output. Basically, we're going to be learning how to write to a file as well as read from a file. Now, there are multiple ways to do this in Java, but I'm going to be showing you guys the way that I do it, which in my opinion is the easiest way. But just be aware that you might come across code that does it in other ways, which is fine. It's mostly based on preference. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to write to a file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import java.io. Asterisk. And this gives us access to everything we need to do file IO. So what we're going to be doing is using an object called a buffered writer. Now we are getting an error here saying that we cannot resolve constructor buffered writer. And this is because we need to pass in a file writer object to the constructor of a buffered writer. So how this is going to look is like this. We do new file writer, and I'm going to put this on a new line. And in the constructor of the file writer, we need to write the path of where we want the file to go. Now, when we are writing to a file, if a file doesn't exist, it actually creates that file for us. So what I did was I went to my desktop and I created a new folder called test. And right now it's empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this path. We're going to go to our file writer and in quotes, we're going to paste this path. Now we also need to give a name to the file that we're going to be writing. So what we do is we just do another set of backslashes and we would just give a name to the file. We could do something like output.txt. Now we are getting another error saying unhandled exception java.io.io exception. Basically what this is saying is that this could throw an error and we need to have a way to handle that. So what we'd have to do is we'd have to put this all in a try catch block. So let's go ahead and do that now. And for this demonstration, uh, we're just going to go ahead and return if an exception is thrown. So now that we have this, all we need to do is write to the file. And how we would do that is we would just do bw dot write. And in here, let's go ahead and just give it some names here. Let's do something like uh, Karen. Let's go ahead and copy this. Go ahead and do something like Chad and Becky. Now, one thing to note, and which is good practice, is that once you're done using a buffered writer, you want to go ahead and close it. All right, so at this point, we see that we don't have anything in this folder. Let's go ahead and run this program. We see that it completes successfully. And now if we go to output.txt, as we see here, look at this. We have Karen, Chad, and Becky. But look, we have this all on the same line. What we want to do is we want to have these on different lines. So what we could do is at the end of this, we can do backslash n. And again, for Chad, we can do backslash n. And this is saying, hey, once you're done writing this part, create a new line. So if we go ahead and run that, and we go back to output.txt, now we see uh, the output is how we want it. And one thing to note is the first time we wrote this, it actually created this output file. But the second time we ran it, since this file already existed, it actually overwrites the file. So just be wary of that. If you do have an important file, uh, this will overwrite it. All right, so now that we learned how to write to files, let's go ahead and try and read from this file. So let's go ahead and delete all of this. And this is going to be very similar, but instead of using a buffered writer, we're going to use a buffered reader. So for buffered writers, we had to pass in a file writer to the constructor. This time we have to add a file reader. So it'd be very similar. We just do new file reader and we would just give it the path of the file we want to read from. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new line again and put the path in here. And now if we want to actually read from this file, this is how it would look. Let's go ahead and create a string variable. Now what we want to do is we want to use our buffered reader and loop through each line and print it out. So we would need to do this in a while loop. Now how that would look is we would just set s equal to br.readLine. Now what this is going to do is that it's going to go through each line of the text. So it's going to first print out Karen and then Chad and then Becky. And then once it gets to the end of a file, this br.readLine is going to return a null. So we want to do this while this whole thing here, this s does not equal null. And while it's not equal to null, we want to just go ahead and print it out. 
And again, we want to go ahead and close our buffered reader for, uh, for just for good practice. So if we go ahead and run that, we see down here that it does in fact print out every line in our document. All right, so that's reading and writing from a file. Let's do something a little bit more interesting and let's go ahead and copy a file. So let's go ahead and take the text from one file and write it to a new file. So what we can do is we can reuse most of this code. All we need to do here is create a buffered writer object. And in here, instead of having it write to output.txt, let's go ahead and do output-copy.txt. Now, instead of just printing it out to the console here, let's go ahead and write it to that file. So we need to do S, and then we also need to add in a line break. And then down here, we need to uh, go ahead and close our buffered writer as well. So now if we go into our folder, we see that we only have output.txt. Let's go ahead and run our program. The program finished. We go to output copy.txt. We double click it and we see that it uh, successfully copied it. All right, guys, that is writing to a file as well as reading from a file. And we did an additional exercise where we used both of those to copy a file. So hopefully you guys found that video helpful. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.